What's good? We back. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow with the Boxing Clinic and more. Y'all know we do more than boxing. We uh, you know, giving our media reaction to the Oklahoma City Thunder falling to the Utah Jazz, ninety-one to ninety-six, and getting eliminated in the playoffs in the first round with Melo, with George, with Westbrook, with with Stephen Adams. I mean, you know, it was a talented bunch, but I think a lot of people are undervaluing and underrating what okay what uh, Golden State Warriors were able to do with adding Kevin Durant. And you just don't put that talent together. It just don't just work because of the talent is meshing. We seen with Miami early on they had to mesh and had to get some strong, strong coaching. And Oklahoma City Thunder, you know, before I get into the game, don't I don't think they got a strong enough coaching. And I don't think they got that stern coach that's gonna demand that respect. And that's just my opinion on that. And I off it, it also schematically, I don't think he knows how to implement Melo, George, and, and Westbrook together. I know Westbrook can be a hard dude to get the uh you know, to get in the flow. But in this game, it was just about, you know, Mitchell and, and Russ. And um and it just seemed that, you know, Mitchell had just a little bit more oomph than what Russ got from his supporting cast. You know, Gerbert Gobert checked in and did some things, you know, blocks Good putbacks. I mean, uh, favors hit a big shot. Good rebounds. Good putbacks. Uh, Joe Ingles just did enough as well. I mean, uh, you know, Burke gave him some strong plays. O'Neal made some big plays. It's basically, um, even though Russ kind of outscored him, maybe about played Mitchell for most of the game, his supporting cast gave them a boost. But, I mean, from when you talking about role players, and, and superstar slash all star top tier talent players, role players you expect to play better at home, especially in the playoffs than the road. But Russell Westbrook had two all star, you know, caliber guys with him and Melo, um, and Paul George, and you know neither one of them showed up. You know, you know Paul George showed up like a role player usually does at home, but didn't show up on the road, and that's a big issue, man. You know, Paul George got to be consistent. He ain't got to drop 36 or 40 points every playoff game, but he got to be able to at least give you 20, you know, seven rebounds, seven, five or six assists, and some good defense. And Donovan Mitchell was baking his ass, you know, especially with Ricky Rubio falling out the rotation with a hamstring injury. Um, Oklahoma City should be ashamed. You know, they got the same result. when they ain't have nobody but Victor Oladipo and Russell Gash last year and Steven Adams. They added, you know, Paul's to be a top 15, almost a top 10 player in Paul George, even after the injury. And Melo, um, who should at least be able to spot up and shoot for goddamn. Melo ain't provide nothing this year. And I think it's because Melo has been used to, um, you know, being a vocal point of the offense. And the offense, you know, going to him, he iso Melo. He don't know how to be implemented into a regular offense and do the other little things. That's going to help the team, you know, get to the next level. And at the end of the day, he's going to have to look himself in the mirror. He's going to have to start defending. He's going to have to start facilitating. He's going to have to start becoming a spot-up shooter. They're going to have to implement him a post-game. He's going to have to make his game more flexible. Even if it's just him and Russ and Paul George walk next year, he's going to have to just, you know, change his game to be more team-friendly. But, you know, Utah was the better team. They was a better coach team. They had the better talent than Donovan Mitchell other than Russell Westbrook. And, you know, the rookie made plays, and he had the better supporting cast, you know, even equating Paul George in there. You know, Jeff Ingles was talking cash shit to Paul George in this series, and Mitchell provided them the boost. He, I mean, Gobert dominated for dominated for some of these games. Favor showed up. We've been waiting for him to show up. Even Don, Dante Exum gave him some good buckets I seen earlier in this series. So, um you know, Utah going to Houston, and think about Utah is they defend, you know. And if they defend enough, you know, and put enough pressure on James Harden, Harden will crumble in the playoffs. We've seen it several times. You know, Westbrook is going to – that's the difference between Westbrook. Westbrook is a is an under-the-lights player. You put enough pressure on James Harden, he, I mean, I'm trying to – him and CP3, and CP3 might get injured too. You put enough pressure on them, they will revert back to adolescent, you know, basic kid shit on the court. So I'll give Utah all the chance, and I'm just, you know, I'm not surprised that OKC Thunder, it didn't work out because I, I said in the beginning of the year, I didn't think they had the strong enough coaching staff to, 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 to really weather the storm 
as far as building camaraderie and becoming one unit and moving as one unit. I felt that Russ Brook was stronger than and bigger than the organization. He was going to do what he wanted to do. And he's developing point guard, point guard skills, but he got he got to be able to get his guys in rhythm. You know, they should have pulled him aside and tried to get mellow in rhythm at some point in this season and have him coming off screens and just doing basic shit. Oklahoma City don't have a good don't have good depth and they don't have a good coach and they don't have a good offensive system. You know, the triangle with Pop Run, they don't have a system. It seems a lot of basic high school plays, basic schematics. I mean, they just don't. They need a, a hard coach. They need a legendary coach that's going to demand that respect and step in and, me- and have, you know, kind of rain Rushbrook in and try to and try to really implement Paul and Melo. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, is is, is Paul going to walk? He really loves being in L.A., Obviously, it's going to be a race to get to L.A. for him because, you know, obviously they, they want to get Kawhi Leonard or him. And, you know, whichever one they're able to get first. If Paul going to, you know, don't return to OC, OKC and you got a chance to get Paul George, they're going to get Paul George because then, you know, they can trade whoever they want to trade for another superstar or bring Kawhi Leonard on too via trade. So the Lakers got a lot of options as well as the Clippers, you know. You know, L.A. is L.A., you know. People want to be in L.A., so... They got to look out and be able to get, you know, try to battle for some of those guys that's trying to come to L.A. For Westbrook, man, it's funny, man. You know, him and, and Oladipo, I call him Home Depot, they didn't work last year. Now Oladipo is on the verge of making it to the second round, which we all know Cleveland is probably going to smash him on Sunday anyway. But, you know, he's showing up and he balling. And all of a sudden, Paul George get over there. He got a, a, a road-out-road type of season, up and down, up and down, up and down. And he ended on the down note. You know, so his players going to be like, damn, I go out there and play with OKC. Russ going to be killed my career. And I did a video, and I don't think Russell Westbrook is intending to to be so ball dominant. But, you know, I, I think he really is maturing. He's not competing for shots no more. I've seen him make a lot of the right plays out there, dog. So if I'm Paul George, I'm, I'm considering playing with that man. You know, I, I think I may stay with Russell Westbrook because I see the maturity. I think he does want the best for his teammates, and I think he does hear the criticism, and he wants to evolve. I don't think he's a ball hog or a team killer by, 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 uh, by on per, by, but on purpose. You know, I think he wants to do good, and I seen that tonight. I seen Westbrook wanting to make the right plays, and if he continues on that road, and they could somehow get Melo not to opt in, or if he opt in, they can get rid of him next year or something like that. I can see him now kind of making that. That that he involved in that metamorphosis into being a, a point guard that knows when to score and then when to fall back. I see it happening. You know, it's not going to just happen overnight or next year. It's going to continue to happen when he, when he keeps failing in the first round. He's going to have to do something different. And tonight, he tries to do something different. His team just didn't step up and help him. Congrats to Donovan Mitchell, Joe Ingles, a guy that was cut by the Clippers. I know they regret it. Um, Gobert, you know, who was a little bit hurt by Gordon Hayward. You know, you know, spurring them for Boston. Um, you know, Quinn Snyder, great coach, should be up for coach of the year as well. Um, Utah deserved it. You know, a team that hadn't been making too much noise since Dan Williams and then before that since Stockton and Malone. Um, they deserved this victory. And that, that Donovan Mitchell kid is something else. I'm mad that my Detroit Pistons passed him up for Luke Kennard. But I'm happy that he landed in Utah and he able to have an impact on that city they love basketball. And uh, congratulations to the Utah Jazz for advancing to the second round. And I give them a little bit of a shot to beat Houston. Just a little bit.